What's up guys, welcome back to In The Shop TV. That's my 1955 Chevy truck project that I've been building for about a year now. If you're a regular of the channel, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm gonna welcome you to part three of a three video series sponsored by Tanks Inc. all about simplifying the LS fuel system. In the last episode, we got our fuel pump and our sender wired up, put it in a custom loom and kind of snaked it through our chassis and got it into position. The episode before that was all about tank components, the pump that we chose, the sender that we chose, the filler neck and all that good stuff. I really do wanna give a huge shout out to Tanks Inc. for sponsoring this video series. It not only helped me out a lot, but hopefully they turned you guys on to an incredible company that makes incredible products for your build. So today's video is all about plumbing. We're gonna get this thing plumbed up with some custom hose, some fittings, a Corvette style fuel regulator, and I think we're gonna to have to cut the frame yet again. I know since it's a sponsored video, I've been going on and on about Tank Sink, but it's well deserved because now I'm getting ready to plumb this thing. They've got an entire kit right here that's got hose, all the AN fittings, the filter regulator, all in one, which is just gonna make this whole thing super easy and you don't have to add a whole bunch of different stuff to your cart. One kit, one click, and it's on the way. So this is Tank Sink actual part number, which is 634173-25. But on their actual website, you'll see it listed as FR-line kit. Mine says FR-line kit-45, which basically notates that there's two 45 degree fittings included. The kit includes literally everything that you're gonna need to get from the pump to the Corvette style filter regulator. From there on, obviously you're gonna plumb up to your intake or wherever you're running from there down your frame. That's gonna be a whole nother video. We're not quite there yet. We've got a bag full of AN fittings. We've got the Corvette style regulator, filter regulator. What I really like about this one is it comes with the AN fittings already brazed onto the end. Normally these come with just a straight pipe out of here and then you would use quick connect fittings that you'd find on the new Corvettes or our newer fuel systems that just kind of snap on. You do need a special tool to remove these though. They included this one for if you're using it as a factory intake or a factory fuel rail up at front. So it really is meant to be with all this hose, a complete system. If you wanted to plumb the entire vehicle from the tank up to the intake, this kit's got you covered. And of course they give you 25 feet of push lock hose. This hose is rated for E85 and ethanol fuels. It says so right here, high performance push on hose, E85 compatible. It's got 3 8 ID hose, 300 PSI. We're not gonna come anywhere near exceeding that. All right, let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is use these adapters. These are called NPT to AN adapters. And basically you have a pipe thread on one end and then you got your AN fitting on the other end. The whole purpose of this is so that we can take these NPT fittings and come out of the pump and then transition over to our AN fittings on the other end. I'm gonna go ahead and get these started. Um, what I like to do is wrap a little thread sealant on the NPT part of these. And this is a product that I kind of swear by for this stuff. It's called gas oil. It's E-Seal. It's specifically rated for ethanol, E10, E85 type fuels. It's basically just like a PTFE um, pipe thread sealant, but it's specifically formulated for gasoline and, and fuels and stuff like that, where it won't break down with the solvent nature of the gas and, all, and everything. So um, a friend of mine who actually builds gas stations for a living turned me on to this stuff. This is what they use when they install pumps and the handles and the hoses and all that good stuff. So I've been swearing by it ever since when I build stuff with cars and you don't need it all over the place. You don't need it with the AN fittings and everything. But whenever I have NPT fittings or something like that, even though they're tapered, I like to use a little bit of a sealant on it. A lot of people say when you tighten these AN fittings down, you need to use an aluminum wrench. It certainly doesn't hurt and they're readily available if you want to purchase them. I use a standard open in box wrench. I just find that if you just go slow and don't slip, it doesn't leave any marks at all. It's just, you know, I think if you're like really in a production shop and you're wrenching quick and you're trying to hurry, that's when the uh, aluminum wrenches might be your friend. But sitting here in my shop and, and taking my time and trying to do things more methodical and being careful, these are just fine. All right, so for the next step, what we need to do, um, unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to pull this tank out because I'm gonna route my fuel lines, my, my send and my return fuel lines are gonna go this way and through that cross member right there. I think we're gonna cut a hole, insert a grommet and go right through there. Everything we just hooked up in the last video, we gotta unhook it and get this tank pulled out. We could put like two bulkheads right there on our custom Chevy plate or in the cross member itself and then just attach an AN fitting to that. It would be like a 90 degree elbow on the back of that fitting 
um, to our regulator. We could do that. It's just another point of connection and another place for leaks to occur. So I figured let's just run the hose directly through the cross member. It'll still look nice and neat. And it's just two less places for leaks to occur. All right, first time using the lift. That's kind of nice. All right, so we need to poke through right here. And for that, I'm gonna use a hole saw that's about the same size as the grommet that I have, give or take. We need to be really, really careful though because our differential cover is about mm, two and a half, three inches right behind this. So um, if you ever horse down on a hole saw really hard and then pff, pop through and we don't wanna do that. So I think as soon as we start getting close to cutting through, we're just gonna kind of back off and take our time and. Just barely pop through that. The hole saw that I have for this is unfortunately not a carbide tip hole saw. It is a bimetal HSS, which is high speed steel. Um, what does that mean? It means that it will get the job done, but not nearly as quickly. And we might be kind of hacking at it a little bit, but it'll get it done. If I size this right, this grommet's gonna be kind of a tight fit in that hole. Even so, I'm gonna go ahead and get some Permatex right stuff and seal this sucker in there for life. So before we put it back down on the ground, put the tank in and start installing the hoses and all that good stuff, I wanna put a couple more holes in this cross member. I wanna put one back here on this side for when we start running our electrical back for our lights and all that type of stuff and I want to put another one over here for our vent line. All right so there's a the grommet with our vent line. I just think plenty of excess in so that we got room. I'm gonna trim this one off the same length as the rest. All right so we've got this hole right here. I just drilled the 3 8 hole and this is where we're gonna mount our fuel regulator. So that's the completed install from the filter regulator back. They got a tank back in and gets plumbed up on this side. We're in the home stretch. What I'm going to do now is get these 45 degree fittings on here and just kind of figure out where we need to trim these lines.
All right, so I've got the first one cut, which is our return here. And getting these on, these push lock fittings, people complain about these all the time, that they're really hard to get on. There's a special tool you need. It's like a press that you put in your vise. I've never had a problem getting them on. I don't understand what's so difficult about it. You really just push the thing in until it bottoms out and you're done. Yes, it's a little firm. It's supposed to be firm, but they're great. They don't leak. They hold really tight. Just push hard and they go in. But if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can get yourself a little bit of lube or silicone spray and put that on there. Or a really cool trick is if you dip this in some really hot water, it softens it right up and you just push it right in. It's super easy. So you'll know it's bottomed out when this little collar here isn't loose like that. And that last little eighth of an inch is a little bit difficult. So you can just put it on something firm. There you go. Although we're not quite done yet, looks pretty good if I don't say so myself. What do you guys think? Like this install? Don't like it? Comments, criticism, concerns, anything I should have done differently? Leave it in the comments. Love to hear what you think. So we've still got these two vent lines. This is for the fuel tank, and then that's got this rollover vent that gets put on the top of it and then this is for our differential so i'm thinking about making a bracket that holds both of these together and mounting it's kind of the height of the step ridge right here and um getting them both in there together and tie it up and hit under this thing of course that's only the part of the fuel system that goes to the filter regulator from that an fitting right there we've got to put hard line coming up the side of our frame and down and run that all the way up to our motor but that's going to be another project for another day Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this three-part series sponsored by Tank Sync. I want to give a huge, huge shout-out again to Tank Sync for sponsoring this. You guys help me out tremendously, and I love your products. I love the service. And if you guys need anything for your fuel system, don't hesitate to check them out. They're great people to deal with. Thank you guys again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.